This is lesson three. This is our final lesson in our sequencing series unit. So we're talking about the geometric sequence. This is a lot like our exponential model. I mean, it's, it's very much the same except for we're talking about patterns and sequences. But with the recursive definition for a geometric sequence, you have your two parts again. You have your initial amount. So that's basically, if you think about the exponential, that's like we started with $5,000 in the count, and then we're looking at how it grew over time, which was our growth factor, which is going to be our R, which is our common ratio. So these are the two things that we know. And then this is the recursive formula. And N has to be greater than 1 because you have to have the previous term to find the next term. But the first term is A sub 1 for first term, and then R is your common ratio. So if you think about it, it does look very much like A times B to the X power. All right, then the explicit formula is a sub n for the nth term equals the first term times r to the n minus 1, which again looks a lot like our exponential. And so with this one, we don't need the previous term to find the next term. A lot of times your common ratio is going to be a fraction. So keep that in mind. And I'll show you how to find the common ratio. It's not going to be as simple as just looking at it and seeing that you add 2, add 2, add 2, or add 3, add 3. It's not going to be like the arithmetic. So the first little group, we're going to determine if these sequences are geometric. So if we look at this one, this is how you determine. You would take 6 and divide it by 3, and you get 2. You take 12, divide it by 6, and you get 2. You take 24, divide it by 12, and you get 2. And 48 divided by 24, you get 2. So this is geometric. And the common ratio would be multiplying by 2. And then if you look at the next one, if we did 6 divided by 3, that's 2. 6 divided by 9 is not 2. That's actually, um, what, 2 thirds. And then you could check it one more time. You could do, okay, so what is... Um, Oops, I had this one backwards. So this would be 9 divided by 6, so that's 3 halves. So you can tell that's not going to be 2. And then you would have 12 divided by 9, and that would be uh, 4 thirds. So this one is not geometric. So you're taking the next, the second term, dividing it by the first, the third divided by the second, the fourth divided by the third. So Second divided by the first, third divided by the second, fourth divided by the third, and so on to determine if there's a common ratio. This one's not geometric. Actually, if you look at it, it's plus three, plus three, plus three. So this one's actually arithmetic, and that's how you determine. Sorry I messed that one up. I've been trying to get these three lessons done so that I can get all the videos uploaded. If you want to work ahead this week, you can. All right, so that one's not geometric. And then you can look at number three and number four, and you can try those and then look at the completed notes and see if you did those correctly. I should have those posted um, the day I do the lesson. So if you work ahead, um, yeah, you won't have the completed notes. All right, so look at number five. What are the indicated terms of the geometric sequence? So we want to find the tenth term of the geometric sequence. And so there's the formula that we're going to use. to my notes when I see where I forgot to finish my letters. I use a ruler to write these to try to make it look very neat for you. All right, so if we want to find the tenth term, 
So we're going to substitute in n because that means the nth term. So this is the tenth term. Then we need our initial amount, which would be 4. That's our first term. And then what is the common ratio? Let's see. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So r is 3. So times 3 to the n, which would be 10, minus 1. So this is a lot like the exponential, your initial amount, your growth factor, and then your exponent. So if we want to know the tenth term, because we use our exponential models to predict, so now we're looking for the tenth term. So this would be 4 times 3 to the ninth. And that would be, if you type that in your calculator, should give you 78,732. All right, the eighth term, and here's our um, sequence. So if we want to find the eighth term, we're going to use a sub n equals the first term times r to the n minus 1. And we're looking for the eighth term. And then we have 3, let's see, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 divided by 9 is 3, so r is 3. So we have times 3 to the 8 minus 1. So the eighth term would be 3 times 3 to the seventh. And if you type that in your calculator, your eighth term would be 6,561. All right, so there's also a geometric mean, and you would see this on the ACT, just like you did the arithmetic mean. And it is found by taking the square root of x times y, and that would be the two numbers in a geometric sequence when you have a missing number in between. So this would be x and this would be y. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to see if you can find the geometric mean for this sequence if you're missing in, in find that missing term. And it's multiple choice, just like it would be on the ACT. So you can pause it. I'm going to move on because of time. So you have 40, the square root of 48 times 3. So that would be the square root of 144. And if you remember when you're taking square root, you could have plus or minus 12. So your answer would be C because it could be multiplying by a negative number or dividing by a negative number. So if you were dividing by, let's see, 48 divided by 4 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So it could be 48 divided by um, negative 4 would be negative 12, and then negative 12 divided by negative 4 would be positive 3. So it could be a plus or minus. All right, then the last thing we're going to talk about really quick is the geometric series. And remember, series is just the sum. And you have two. You have the finite and you have an infinite. And we remember that we know infinite or finite is the one that has a first and a last term. And then infinite is the one that goes on and on. And remember, the S means sum. And this is your formula where you have the first term, 1 minus R to the N power. And N would be however many terms are in the the sequence, and then 1 minus r, and r is your common ratio. r cannot be equal to, to 1, because then you would have 1 minus 1, you'd have 0 on the bottom, and that would be undefined. So there is your formula for a finite geometric series. And then an infinite geometric series. So in some cases, you can evaluate an infinite geometric series. So if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then the series will, I'm looking to make sure that, yeah, so this one will converge. All right, so when the absolute value of r is less than 1, then the series will converge, or it means it gets closer and closer to the sum. When the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, the series diverges. Or approaches no limit. So you can evaluate 1 when it's converging. You can't when it's diverging. So it doesn't approach a limit. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So determine each infinite geometric series 
whether it di diverges or converges. So state whether it would have a sum. So let's look to see if it's going to get smaller and smaller or if it's going to get like it's going to converge to a sum or if it's going to approach no limit. So let's look at these. All right, we know that a is 1, so the first term is 1. We know that a2, the second term, is negative 1 third. So to find r, we know we can take the, the second term and divide it by the first term, and we get negative 1 third. So now that if the absolute value of r, which is going to be the absolute value of 1 third, is equal to positive 1 third. To go back up to the definition, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then it converges. So this one converges. So it will have a sum. So it converges and it will have a sum. So we took the first term and the second term because that's how you decide, that's how we found r in the sequence. And then we divided it, we got a negative one third and the absolute value of r would just be positive one third. And again, go back up here, if the absolute value of r is less than one, then the series converges. So it does get closer and closer um, to the sum. All right, then the next one, let's see, we have to find the first term. So I'm gonna substitute in one. So that would be one minus one would be zero. So the first term would just be five. And if I plug in 2 for the second term, so that would be 5 times 2, so the second term would be 10. And let's see, r would be 10 divided by 5, so that means r is 2, and the absolute value of r is still 2. And it says right here, if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, then the series diverges, so it approaches no limit. So this series... has no sum because it diverges. All right, and then the formula for an infinite geometric series is right here, that's the formula. So you take the first term and you do one minus r. So if, if you do have one that converges, this is the formula you would use to find the sum. Remember the absolute value of r has to be less than one. Now remember, if you get the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to one, then it does not have a finite sum. So that's because it diverges. Okay, so on the back, I have given you a couple of problems to evaluate the series to the given term, so to the eighth term and the seventh term. And then, so this is finite. So we would use so we're going to go to the eighth term so we would use s n equals the first term times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r so we're looking for the sum of the first eight terms. So that would be one times one minus, we have to figure out r to the eighth power divided by one minus r. So what is r? Two divided by one is two, four divided by two is two, so r is two. 
So we're going to have 1 minus 2 to the 8th power over 1 minus 2. So then you would type that in your calculator. So the sum of those first eight terms would be 255. And I'm going to double check that just to make sure that I didn't misdo that in my head. So 1 minus 2 to the, uh, my calculator just died. That would, okay, hold on, maybe it's going to work. All right, so I'm going to clear that out, and I'm going to do 1 minus 2 to the 8th power, and that would be divided by negative 1, which would give me a positive 255. So if you just type it in your calculator, there you go, 255. All right, you can do number eight, and then you can check the completed notes to make sure you did those correctly. Now we're going to find um, this geometric series for these two problems. So let's look at these two. We have three plus two plus four thirds plus eight ninths. So we need to determine if we can evaluate this. So let's do the first term is... 3, the second term is 2, so R would be 2 divided by 3, so the absolute value of R would be 2 divided by 3, so this one actually, what is that, is it converges or is it diverges? It converges because the absolute value of R is less than 1, so that's going back over here, the absolute value of R is less than 1, so it converges, so we can find the sum. And we're going to use the formula that is S equals the first term over 1 minus R. So the first term is 3 and 1 minus R, that would be 2 thirds. So then S is equal to 3 minus, and I can change that 1 into a fraction that has 3 over on the bottom. So 3 over 3 minus 2 thirds would be 1 third. And then when you're dividing fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So your sum would be 9. And then I will leave number 10 for you to try or for you to determine if you can find the sum, determine whether it converges or diverges, and then if it converges, then you can find the sum. And the completed notes will be posted the day after, or the, that afternoon that I do the lesson. So the dates are in Schoology. But this, if you're working ahead, this should be enough to help you. And the homework should be just like the problems that we did in the notes. So I hope this helps. Um, so lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, we're done this morning. And... Pretty quick, but they're there. They'll be there for you if you want to work ahead.